Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. It is indeed an encouragement, a source of joy, to have an influence on someone spiritually and hear that person recount their faith, what they believe, how precious their faith in Messiah Yeshua is to them. But even better than hearing them say things about their faith is seeing them put their faith into action. And that is exactly what the Apostle Paul is speaking to an individual to do, a man by the name of Philemon. This man is serious about his faith. He even has a congregation in his home. He is a servant, a fellow servant. But the question is this, when there is something very difficult to do, Will that faith cause that person to do just that? Perhaps in the flesh, what we think rationally we wouldn't want to do, but because of our obedience to the Word of God, in order to have that pleasing testimony, because of these things, we will respond and we will obey and do that which is well-pleasing to God. Well, take out your Bible. We are going to embark in this lesson through the entire epistle that Paul wrote to this man, Philemon. And we see here that this individual, he was indeed a leader. And it's even more important for leadership to demonstrate their faith. Let's begin verse 1. Now, instead of giving a great deal of background information, what this epistle is about, let's simply enter into it. And as we encounter things that are clearly seen in the text, we'll comment on them. Many times you read a commentary about a book in the Bible, and you encounter all types of secondary information what other people have said about it, some of their assumptions, what they believe the factors are. I prefer not to do that. I think we need to stay very closely related to the text itself and not engage in inferring things that others have have speculated. Verse 1, Paul, a servant And this one means one who is in bonds. This isn't simply saying I'm a servant of the Lord, but Paul is literally in prison. He is a prisoner in bonds. And why is that? Well, look again. Paul, a prisoner of Messiah Yeshua. Now, most people believe that Paul Based upon the book of Acts, he would be in Caesarea. And he was there as a prisoner for his faith because of sharing biblical truth in the land of Israel and beyond. And there were false charges made against him. So Paul is a prisoner. But notice, while he's in prison, and this would be a very difficult experience, Paul was not thinking of himself, but he was thinking of another individual. Verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Messiah Yeshua. So he's the author of this, but not alone. Also, a very close associate, one that we've spoken about previously, Timothy. 
Timothy, and notice what it says. Paul, a prisoner. But when we look at Timothy, it says, the brother. And that definite article, just one letter in the Greek, but of great significance in this usage. Because Paul is saying that Timothy is not just one of the brothers that he has in the faith, but Timothy is being spoken here as an example of what a true brother is. We have seen in the writings of Paul this close relationship that he thinks of Timothy as a spiritual son, one that he can trust, one that he can rely on, one who is extremely useful to him in this fellow, in this joint service in sharing the gospel truth. So Paul, a prisoner of Messiah Yeshua and Timothy, the brother. And he's writing to one, as it says here, Philemon, and he speaks about Philemon in great uh, terms of endearment. He says to beloved Philemon, also our fellow servant. So Philemon is a believer. He is a fellow servant in the faith. He's also not just writing to this leader, and we'll see he's a leader in a moment, but also he writes to a woman that's located there, also to Apphelia, who is also called Beloved, and then another man, Archippus, the, our fellow soldier, and the ones in your house congregation. Now, this is an important piece of information because it tells us that Philemon, he was serious. He had in his home a congregation. And perhaps this woman may be his wife. It may be a woman who is a pillar in this, this congregation and a, a significant other fellow servant that he writes. But Paul is addressing this congregation and their leader, Philemon, in regard to a very significant and personal matter. Now, one thing that I'll say is that we're going to get a glimpse of Paul, not just what he believed, not just what he said to others, but we're going to see Paul writing in a very personal way. So one of the values of this epistle is not just the instruction that we receive, the theological truth, but also we get a, an intimate glimpse of Paul, how he behaves, how he interacted with others. Verse, verse 3. As he does so frequently in his epistle, he speaks of grace. He greets them and he says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Messiah Yeshua. Now this is frequent common language for Paul to speak about grace producing peace and it's from God. He's the provider and he's provided this grace that produces peace through Messiah Yeshua, the, the one who is the Redeemer. And this redemption brings about a change. And as we look at this epistle, what, what Paul is going to admonish, command, and encourage this one, Philemon, to do is to demonstrate change in his life, not to make a decision on how most people would, but how faith causes us to decide things differently, not just with our own interests, but the interests of others. Verse, verse 4, I give thanks to my God always making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul begins... And he calls this one whom he primarily is addressing in this epistle, Philemon. 
and he says you are beloved you are a fellow servant and then he says i am praying for you i am making mention i remember you in my prayers now all of this reveals to us a close relationship that paul has with this individual we're going to see undeniably before we complete our study that paul was instrumental in leading this one philemon to faith causing him through that proclamation of the message to be born again to have eternal life to become that new creation and paul is indeed going to remind him of this fact so he says i give thanks to my god always that's significant always making mention to you in my prayers verse 2 hearing of your love and faith now he's saying here i'm thanking god i'm making mention of you in my prayers hearing there's a report of your love that you act in love this is important because love is the primary characteristic of the torah we know that all the torah can be summarized in two commandments love the lord your god with all your heart soul and might the very essence of you and love your neighbor as yourself so love is foundational in the commandments of god and paul is saying here we have heard about your torah observance your love that manifests itself in your life and this is all an outcome of what he says as we keep reading love and your faith which you have for the lord yeshua now notice that he says lord yeshua why philemon is demonstrating based upon his faith based upon the love of god that he has he is demonstrating the lordship of messiah yeshua in his life and this is a question that we should constantly ask ourselves am i demonstrating his lordship over my life if you put that as the foundational the primary objective of your life you find yourself in a situation deciding what to do sometimes that may be difficult not knowing what is the best decision to make one biblical principle that can assist you in making right decisions is saying how can i demonstrate what decision can i make that will demonstrate manifest show to others that that he yeshua is my lord and that it's because my faith in him my love for him that i've made this decision this is what paul is reminding this one philemon to do so hearing of your love and your faith which you have for the lord yeshua and for all the saints so his faith is not just a faith that's personal to to god but that faith and love for god manifests itself out to fellow believers and again can we say honestly in a transparent and an accurate way that i truly have love for god and that love manifests itself and this is the the biblical reason why he speaks about love the lord your god and your neighbor as yourself because one's love for god if it's real if it's genuine if it's present is going to manifest itself out in love to others so this one philemon he has he has a testimony he has demonstrated his faith his obedience to the lordship of messiah to all the saints and paul is going to say you need to continue in this way there's another matter that you need to respond to in the same manner as you have 
in the past. Verse, verse 6. So that the fellowship or sharing, and in this context, it's probably better translated, this word koinia, better translated as a sharing. So that the sharing of your faith should be effective. Now, this is another foundational principle. Our faith is always effective. Now, we may not see it in this world, we may not see it in the short term we may not see it because it manifests itself apart from us meaning this you may have an influence on someone your faith was effective in their life you may not see the fruit of that you may not know of it but be assured as the scripture says the word of god does not return void so too because the faith of messiah is based upon the word of god it does not return void it is effectual if we utilize it if we maintain the principles of scripture for exercising faith it will be effective and that's why he says in this passage so that the sharing of your faith effective it should be in the recognition of of every good and the implication is all that's good every good thing which is in you and notice what he says and and for messiah Yeshua. now some bibles and they do not make a distinction because we have two prepositions the word n and the word ace and that's why and here again we have tools today that allow someone who has not studied years learning the the biblical languages and studying the grammar of these languages and such but there's tools that allow one to go through very slowly and see wait many translations translate this phrase in you and in messiah yeshua that word in as the same way in but when we look at it there's two different words n which is usually understood as in so that's no problem in you but there's a change it's not again that greek word n but rather it's the word ace which can mean for. So what we translate, if we do so literally, he says that you, we want your your sharing of the gospel, the sharing of your faith, that it should be effective in the recognition that you rightly recognize every good thing, the right thing to do in you, Your faith that's in you should function this way and it should be done. And here's the key for Messiah Yeshua. So again, we need to, if we're going to have an effective faith, if we're going to do things that are are in keeping with the obedience of the truth of God, we need to demonstrate the Lordship, His Lordship in our life and another help is doing things for him i'm not seeking anything i'm not wanting any type of response i'm simply doing it for him sacrificial and this is where paul says other places about living your life as a living sacrifice a daily offering to messiah for him not for our objectives but for him verse verse 7. now notice the next thing that is said here in the greek text the next word is joy obviously to translate it we have to do a little bit differently but it says for we have much joy and and this is a word consolation or encouragement it's a word that relates to comfort but literally 
the more frequent way that it's translated is encourage. Paul says, when thinking of you and knowing, anticipating what you're going to do as one who recognizes in the past what is good, meaning what's in accordance with the will of God, Paul is anticipating here, and therefore he has, he says, for we have much joy and encouragement in your love that, and then there's a phrase, and this phrase is going to repeat a couple additional times. Now, oftentimes in this, this epistle, it's translated with the word heart. And that's fine, but it's not the normal Greek word cardia. But rather, it's a word that speaks about intense emotional feeling. It is that feeling that, that you see something, you hear something, and it, it gets you at the pit of your stomach. It may cause that feeling that you have if, if tears begin to well up in your eye, being moved, perhaps tears of joy being touched sad feeling intensely for for someone their situation what they're going through sometimes very good sometimes very bad it's simply a word that that speaks of having strong very very strong emotion so paul is using words that relate to this where he says keep reading we have much joy and encouragement upon your love in your love that that the the strong emotions of the saints you are renewing through through that's through renewed through you brother now here again that last word brother i believe paul is saying how we anticipate what we have heard about you in the past and what we anticipate you doing in this matter and by the way up until now he has not shared what this matter is what he's going to ask philemon to do none of that has been brought up yet he's laying the foundation he's saying you have behaved faithfully out of love and we anticipate you doing so now and in in that anticipation it is caused it's brought to us this strong sense of emotion that it's being this strong sense of emotion is being and i like this word renewed but literally it's more in the line of being refreshed on account of you what we think you're going to do and then it says brother meaning we know that you're going to behave like a brother verse 8 therefore now paul is again laying the foundation and his choice of words how he's revealing things the order is very very informing about paul as a a speaker now he's writing here but this is how he spoke how he lays the foundation and leads one to make the right decision in this epistle paul is writing in a way that that puts much pressure upon philemon to do the right thing and he says therefore having and this is a word for boldness can also be understood as confidence paul says we have a boldness a confidence and he says much much in messiah so we are convinced of this in messiah we're bold and confident and he says even to the extent to command you he says that i could command you that you would do notice this next phrase basically means the appropriate thing the right thing the correct thing the worthy thing to do now here again it's good to make these teachings personal and to give us principles that can impact our life again when we find ourselves 
in a situation needing to make a decision. What is the worthy thing, the appropriate thing, the right thing to do in light of our faith? In light of being a brother, a fellow believer, being a servant, a fellow servant, a joint servant, a fellow soldier in the faith. So Paul is saying, you know, we could, and he's speaking personally, I could command you to do this. Now he says, he hasn't said what this is yet. He is laying a a deep foundation. He says, I could be so bold and I have boldness in Messiah. Not to ask you, not to beseech you, not to suggest, but he says, to command you to do that appropriate, that right, that worthy thing. But then he switches and he says, on account of love, I I rather, and this is a word of preference, He's saying, I I don't want to have to command you, although in the Lord, I could do just that. But I prefer, I rather encourage you. And who is Paul? Notice what he says about him. Being such as Paul the elder. Now, Paul didn't use titles very much. But what we find here is Paul is referring to himself in a type of senior elder elder being a position of authority and in this case a senior one meaning he has a lot of experience at this time he has been a believer for for a while he has done many different uh, journeys for the faith he has interacted and and god has uphold his his sharing of the gospel what he says The Holy Spirit has worked mightily in his life. He has much fruit, much evidence of him displaying the Lordship of Messiah. And therefore, he says, as as being such, the one that I am, the the elder, I, I could command you, but I prefer, the implication is not to command you. Look now to to verse verse nine, the second part. But now also a prisoner of Messiah Yeshua. He says, I want you to understand two things. First of all, I am an elder, the senior elder. We're speaking about, of course, being outside of, of, of Israel. And therefore, Paul, more than, than any other, he had that, that leadership position being the apostles sent to the nations so he's saying i could command you in this position but now what am i i'm a prisoner i'm in chains i'm in bonds because of my faith my faith in messiah Yeshua. paul in other words saying on one hand i have a an elevated position but on the other hand i am suffering and even though this one, Philemon, he is a, a leader of a congregation that meets in his home, he is looked up to, he has a good reputation for his faith. But Paul is saying, look at me, I'm suffering, I'm in chains. And he's reminding Philemon this based upon what he's going to ask him to do. Let's move on. Look now to verse 10. He gets into the matter here. Almost halfway through this epistle before he says what the issue is. I encourage you in regard to my child. Now, again, he could say son, but he says child. And I've shared with you that term child speaks about a not so much a role when you say a son. You're speaking about one who is a servant or his future uh, reward as an heir. But when you use the term child, 
it's a term of endearment. It speaks about a familiar, that is a family relationship, one that is close. And so he writes now, even before mentioning this one's name, Paul says, I exhort you, I beseech you, I literally, I encourage you concerning my child whom I have born in my bonds. So apparently, this one that we're coming to, he had interaction, he had contact with Paul while Paul was in prison, and Paul led this one to faith. And now this one is just that. He is a believer. He is part of the family of God. He is no longer simply, as we'll see, a slave, but rather now he is a brother. See, faith has serious implications. Faith brings about a significant change in relationships. And this is what Paul is going to teach us and teach as well, Philemon. So he writes, but now also being in bonds of Messiah Yeshua. I, verse 10, I encourage you concerning my child, whom I beget in my bonds. And now he says a word, Onissimus, this one. And we're going to find out a little bit about him, but he says, my child who I beget while in bonds, my bonds, Onissimus. Verse 11, who once to you was unprofitable. Now, the word here is it's Greek is a, a great language because the root word here is a word for, for that which is necessi- necessary, something that's a necessity. So you have that word, that which is necessary, a necessity, and it puts a, a prefix on it, one letter alpha, that, that cancels it out. So once, you, you didn't need him. Once, he was not essential. Once, he wasn't profitable to you. In fact, just the opposite. He was probably someone who had a negative influence, a negative experience for Philemon. Now, why do I say that? Well, we'll come to this in a moment. But he says, once to you, he wasn't profitable. But now... And this is emphatic. Paul is is writing this in a way of, of excitement. But now, in other words, there's been a change. And this change changes everything. You need to see him differently. How differently? Well, once he was not necessary for you, not profitable, but now to you and also to me, He is, and it has that word necessity, and another prefix attached to it, the word you, which is the same word when we talk about the gospel. It's news, and then we have the word good news. That same preposition for good is what it says here, that he is now a necessity, which which manifests, which brings, which produces that which is good and this is very important so paul says this one onisimos who who you know well who in the past was was not an asset he, he's been a liability for you but now to you and to me he has become he has become profitable he is necessary verse 12 whom I have sent. Now, some would argue that that Onesimus, he has left Paul, he is returning to Philemon, and he's the one that's carrying this short epistle. And that's why Paul says, look carefully, whom I have sent. And then he says, 
but not just have I sent him, but you, him, and the implication for a word that appears much later on in this verse. He says, basically, take him close. Receive him. So you receive him. But, but the word here implies bring him close to you. And the reason for this, he is now useful. He says, this is, this is, and he has a word for, for the, the strong emotion of mine. What he says, and this is the second time he uses this word, for a very strong emotion. He says, if you do this, and he's convinced, he's laid the foundation, you're going to do that. We understand what type of believer you are. We understand that your faith is, is an effective faith. So I, I am not commanding you, although I could. I am beseeching you, I am encouraging you now to receive him, bring him close to you. Now notice the change. Now I'll explain what I mean by this in a moment. But this one who was a liability, this one who has harmed you in the past, we'll say why in a moment. Now I want you to bring him into your inner circle. I want you to invest in him. This is what Paul's saying because now he is going to be an asset in your life. And you doing that, you receiving him close to you, he says, you doing this is a source of tender emotions. That thing that, that, that produces feelings of compassion, love, mercy, that mercy being renewed day by day in us for the purpose of loving others. This is what he's saying here. Verse 13. Whom I, and this is a word for wanting something, desiring something. He says, whom, in regard to this one, Onesimus, he says, whom I wanted for myself to hold. Now, this is the same word. Yesterday, I did a teaching on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, where there's that mention of the restrainer. Well, this is the same word. So Paul is saying, whom I wanted to restrain, to keep here, not allow to, to depart from me. This is all to say, I believe he will be a great asset. I want him for myself but he says he says but whom i wanted for myself to keep in order that that more to you that he would serve me in behalf of you excuse me in behalf of you he would serve me in my bonds for the gospel so he's saying i wanted to keep him here, that he would serve me in your behalf. Now, what Paul's going to do in a moment is that he's going to remind Philemon that, that he owes Paul. Paul has been a great blessing, a source by sharing that message, the truth of the cross with him, that, that Philemon has experienced eternal life. What a wonderful influence Paul's been in his life. Nothing more important than this. And Paul's saying, you know, I wanted to restrain him, keep him here, hold him for myself, that he could serve me in your behalf. He says, this is what I wanted to do now that I'm in chains for the gospel. Verse 14. But, he says, Paul's still talking, but without your consent, without your knowledge of this, without your consent of this, not wanting anything to do, in order that not 
as according to compulsion. And this is this word for for an absolute requirement. I did not want to utilize, play that 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 card that says, you know, you're obligated to me, therefore I'm in bonds for the gospel, the gospel that saves you. So I'm just going to keep him here and he's going to serve me in your behalf. You should be doing this, but he'll do it for you. Paul says, I, I didn't want to do this without your knowledge, this word consent or knowledge. He says, I didn't want to do anything that, that forces you to do something, agree to something out of compulsion. But rather, he says, that, that this good thing, that you would recognize yourself that this is a good thing, and he says that you would do so, look at this word, according to a willingness. And this is a word that, that relates also to a, a donation, that you would do so voluntarily. That might be the best way to, to translate it into English. Not wanting that you would be compulsed to do any good thing, but you would do so, you would do so willingly that you would do so voluntarily. Verse 15. For perhaps, and this is a unique word, because most of the times that it appears in the Bible, it says it has to do with something that, that is quick or fast. And, and now what it may be saying is, you need to do this quickly. You need to make, it should be a, an impulsive decision. Because it's so true, so obvious. But it also can mean perhaps. For perhaps on account of this, he was separated for an hour. Meaning, and we're going to see in the next verse or two, that this one, Onesimus, he was a slave. Now, how do you become a slave? We're not talking about slavery. That, that was such a atrocity, an abomination that was practiced in America and also in other parts of the word, world and also still is practicing. We hear so much about human trafficking today and how human trafficking is even increasing. So we're not talking about that type of slavery. We're talking about a very different one, but we'll get there in a moment. Notice what he says. He says, perhaps on account of this, he was separated for an hour in order that eternally he, he should be with you, that you should have him eternally, meaning that, that you're going to be brothers in the kingdom forever and ever. And you might as well start this relationship properly right now. But he says, now verse 16, not any longer as a slave. Now, how one became a slave in the biblical sense was not being taken against one's will and enslaved. What normally this has to do with, and it's certainly the case in the Old Testament, someone would need help financial help and therefore they would go to someone and say may i borrow this amount of money and i'll pay you back and usually there was a a limitation based upon the shemitah year because the maximum someone could serve would be six years and then that seventh year they would stay with the one who they were indebted to, but not as a slave, but as a guest, a house guest. Not working, but, but, but if they did work, they would be paid. So that when they went forth in the seventh year, that they would, would have something, something to begin their life, money in their hand. So it was a, a, a act of, first of all, someone borrows money from me, they can't stand by the terms. They don't have any to pay back. They, they violate the agreement. Therefore, they come to work for me. 
But I'm not supposed to abuse them, but rather I'm responsible for them. Part of the purpose is to train them to, to once more set them back into society on a good, good hold. So apparently, Onesimus, he borrowed money from Philemon. He couldn't pay it back. Remember, not being an asset, not being profitable. But if someone receives another as a slave in this framework for slavery, it's not something that's pleasant. You have to give him something to do, and that service is a a payback. It's either until the debt is paid off, but lots of times the debt wouldn't be paid off in full. What would happen? That special Shemitah year would happen. And therefore, that, that, that person would, would not be paid back in full, but have to let that one go after him being a guest for a year. So there was oftentimes a, a sacrifice that the, that the so-called owner would be making. So he says, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, he says, a beloved brother. Now, this is what Paul is saying that, that Philemon needs to do to Onesimus, that he needs to receive him. No longer is he a slave. He is a new creation in Messiah. He's now your brother. Receive him back. He can be truly now profitable to you. And he says, especially to me, how much more so to you? Paul says, if, if I see him as, as very profitable and a brother, how much more so should you in the flesh, in the things of this world, being a, a good brother in the sense of helping out with earthly things, but also in the Lord being a spiritual brother as well? Verse, verse 17. Therefore, if you have partnership with me, receive him as me. Paul is saying, if we have fellowship, if we have a relationship, konia, if we are partners in the faith, then I'm telling you to receive him in the same way that you would receive me if I came to your home. How would you treat me, the apostle Paul, verse 18, but if something he has wronged you or he owes you, this, he says, charge to my account. So Paul's saying, listen, if there's any harm, if there's any debt, anything, I'll take care of it. I'm willing to pay it out of my own resources. I, Paul, and notice what he says. I, Paul, have written in my own hand, in my own handwriting, I will pay. He says, I'll pay the debt. I'll repay whatever that is. Make it right in his behalf. But he goes on to say that not that I should say to you that also you yourself, you are indebted to me. For truly, he says, for certainly, brother, I, I am a benefit of you in the Lord. He says, refreshing, refreshing, the same word for this strong emotion. So he says in this, uh, in order that I shouldn't say to you that you, know, you owe me, certainly, brother, and it's implying here that he's going to do the right thing and doing so will be a benefit in the Lord because he says you are going to refresh these, these strong emotional feelings when you do the right thing and receive him and recognize your, your indebtedness. That's why he says, verse 21, being convinced of your obedience I write to you knowing that also more surpassing what I say you will do. So Paul 
once again laying that 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 kind of guilt trip almost he's saying I know that you're gonna do this in fact I know that you're gonna go even beyond my expectations why because he's convinced that this man Philemon is a true believer he also says verse 22 and at this present time also prepare for me Paul has expectation that he'll get out of prison and he'll be able to visit Philemon so he says at this time also prepare for me a a lodging a guest room for I hope that on account of your prayers that you be praying for me that I will be released and he says on account of your prayers that I should and it would be be gracious unto you what Paul is saying is I'm coming I want to be a guest prepare the guest room but I'm not coming just to receive I'm coming to be gracious to you that is the implication is the word grace is used here and it's a word for for producing the will of God Paul says I want to come for the purpose of growing you for the purpose of moving you forward into the will of God verse 23 verse 23 he begins his conclusion he begins his his farewell and he says if e Paphras greets you my fellow prisoner in Messiah Yeshua so Paul's not alone in prison there's this one and we've seen him mentioned in the scripture else, elsewhere as a associate Paul this man F Paphras also Mark and another man Aristarchos Demas Lucas my fellow servants so you look here and he mentions one two three four five individuals with Paul six people he speaks of being with him in this location in addition to Timothy as well and then finally he says our last verse verse 25 the grace of our Lord Messiah Yeshua remember not just our Savior but our Lord we're indebted to him to do to act to behave in a proper way that demonstrates his Lordship so the grace that we've received from our Lord Messiah Yeshua with you with your spirit and it means be with your spirit but he simply says with your spirit and the implication that it should be this this grace and then he closes with the word amen which is a word of truth a word of faith a word of belief meaning this he knows what he writes is going to become a reality he has faith that this man Philemon is going to take Onesimus as a brother that they are going to be partners in the faith and that one who was not profitable is going to be highly useful highly profitable for the things that relate to the kingdom work a short epistle but full of important information practical information that will cause us to grow and mature and to demonstrate the fact that we truly love our Lord our Savior Messiah Yeshua Shalom from Israel well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org again to find out more about us please visit our website loveisrael.org there you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch these teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. <laughs>